Hello, my name is Peter Raymer. Today we're going to talk about how to update data in Microsoft Dynamics 365 for finance and operations. So uh, one of the most common ways to update data is to actually use a form. So if I'm in Visual Studio and I go to Application Explorer and I search for Cust Table, which is the main table that um, all of the customers are stored in, I can scroll all the way down to Forms. I can right click on Cust Table, say Open Designer, and it's actually going to open uh, the form designer and I can see how a form works underneath the covers. Uh, pretty much every form is going to have a data source. You add the table as a data source um, and then you set any columns um, on the form to use that data source by setting the data source property and the data field property. Just inherently um, by doing this, I'm done. Any user that sets a value on this form when the record gets saved, either by clicking the save button or selecting a different record on a different grid, the system's going to automatically generate the SQL statement and the code underneath the covers to call um, update on this record or insert if it's a new record. So this covers most of our scenarios scenarios of how we update data. It's really, really easy. Um, in other languages, this would take a whole lot more work to actually update data. Um, but thankfully, we <clears throat> this is very easy. If you have any questions about how to create a form, I recommend you look at one of my other blogs on how to create a form, and I go through these different steps. So next, I'm going to cover how do we update data through X++ code. And for that, I'm going to go ahead and create a runnable class slash job. Um, first thing you need to do is create a project, um, set the model correctly. I've got another article and video on how to create a project, so look at that. Um, then you're going to right click on the project, select Add New Item. And then when this pops up, make sure you select Dynamics 365 items to see all the different items that you can create and then select runnable class uh, parentheses job. This is a little bit different than a regular class. It's just going to generate some different code for us. So in this case, uh, we can create a job called um, update data or update job and then click the add button. I've already done that, so I'm going to go ahead and click cancel and just open the one that I have. Um, you'll see that we get a class and a public static main method. This is a method that we can just run um, directly any code as we're experimenting with um, writing some code. Um, so I've gone ahead and written this section of code to update data. So let's talk through it. The first thing we need is we need to declare a table buffer. Um, the first part is the name of the table that we want that table buffer to be a type of. So in this case, cus table is the table that I'm going to update. And then I'm going to give it a variable name, which um, it's best practice to start any variable name with a lowercase letter. And it's also best practice to name your variable after the table that um, you're using. That just makes it easier if you're using that variable further down. If it's called something strange, um, you'd have to scroll back up um, and find where it's defined to know what type of data um, or type of table buffer it is. So we named it cus table. The next thing we need to do if we're going to update data is we need to select or find an, an existing record. Um, we can't update data that doesn't exist yet. So first step is to load into our table buffer variable um, the data we're going to update. So we're going to use a select statement or preferably a find method. I'm going to cover find methods in a separate uh, video. Um, so for now, I'm just going to write a select statement. We say select first only because we know we only want to select one record. Then I'm going to say for update. Now this is really key and important. If you're new to updating data, this may be the first time you're seeing this. 
for update is a keyword that tells the SQL database we're planning on updating this um, data. It locks the data um, from any other processes from touching or modifying this record uh, until we're done with it, until we've called our TTS commit. Um, this is really important if you don't have this uh, keyword, you're gonna get an error when you try to call update later. Um, it's gonna say, hey, um, you're trying to update a record, but you've never selected it for update. Um, this is also important because if we allowed other processes to touch or modify other fields on this um, table while well, we were making our change, when we call update, sending it all the data that's in our table buffer, we could inadvertently revert back data that other processes have intentionally updated. So we each need to take our turn. That way um, we're only updating the data we intend to, and then another process can update the data it intends to. All right, so I say select first only for update, and then the name of my table buffer variable. And then I say where cus table dot, I need to specify some field or fields that allow me to find a unique value. Um, so for that, how do we do that? If I go back to the cus table in the application explorer and I right click and say open designer, I can actually see um, the definition of my table. I want to go to indexes, then account IDX. Um, and in this case, if you're opening any other table, what you're really looking for is um, the index that has the allowed duplicates flag or property set to no. This tells us that no two records are allowed to have the same value for this field. And so this is a unique index. Some tables may have multiple unique indexes, in which case you can choose. So in this case, I can see I could have also selected by party and data area ID if I knew both those. But essentially, on any given table, you can uh, click through each one of the indexes, checking the um, allowed duplicates flag until you see the one where it says no. And that's the criteria you are going to want to use when selecting um, records. So in this case, I could use party or I could use account IDX. Account IDX in this case is, is the one uh, we're going to prefer to use. So I'm going to go back to our data and select on account num. I can see that within this account IDX, account num is the field I need to use. I just looked up um, from the front end what a, a record was that I could um, update. There is a record in this USRT um, sample data with uh, an account number of 1001. So I specified that in. The next thing we need to do is just a best practice is we should check if we actually found a record. We're gonna say if cus table. Um, technically what this is doing behind the scenes is checking if cus table dot rec ID does not equal to zero. The rec ID will be set if we found a record. It's a required field that's always a non-zero value in um, the database or should be. So um, we're gonna check if this record uh, was found and this is kind of the shortcut for running that same statement. Um, because if we don't and we try to run an update, we're going to get an error or a failure. So um, even if we're really sure um, that there is a record, it's just best practice to always check for it first. Um, then next, we're going to have a TTS begin and commit around our update code. This is really important. This essentially um, creates a transaction block um, in the database and our changes don't actually get applied to the database until the TTS commit occurs. And if there were some issues, some SQL error, um, the whole system's gonna revert back to where this TTS begin is. Um, that's really helpful. You may have a while select statement and put a TTS begin and commit around that whole thing and say, hey, if any one of these records fail to do what they need to do, I wanna revert back 
all of these changes and not just my most recent record. So you can use these TTS begin and commits to great effect. For now, just remember that you need to have them. If you don't have them, um, I'm pretty sure the system actually won't throw an error, but you'll be very confused because your data won't get updated in the database. I actually wish you know they'd throw an error, but I, I think there's reasons why they wouldn't. They don't know where you've got a um, TTS begin commit over Overall. Um, so we just need to really make sure we've got this in our code. The next part inside, we need to set one or more fields. We can set as many as we want, but it's as simple as setting the value on this table buffer variable. Um, in this case, I'm going to set the customer group to 80. Originally in my database, it was set to 20. And then lastly, we're going to call custTable.update. Update is just a method. If I delete the dot and add the dot back, I get some IntelliSense. I can see all the fields that are on my table buffer, and I can also scroll far enough down to actually see all of the methods that are part of my table buffer. Um, and update is a method on every single table buffer variable. It's just part of the base code for any table buffer call update it doesn't take any parameters so I use an open close parentheses semicolon and then I'm done um, this will update my data in, in the database this is really fantastic and and you can see very easy to use um, and so uh, we can run it by right clicking on this job saying set for startup object and it'll turn it bold and then you can click the start button and it'll actually go ahead and run um, this code right here. We would need to comment this code out if we just want to run that portion of it. Uh, I went ahead and already did that. So I'm going to switch back to um, my job here. You can see that it ran um, to see the values. I can right click on the cuss table and select open table browser that'll go ahead and open a table browser for me where I can look at the data I also could just go to all customers and see the data so here's my uh, my browser that's open for um, the table browser you can see similar format sys table browser in this URL and um, I went ahead and filtered the account number by that value we're searching on. So if I scroll all the way over here, I can see the account number is 1001. I just use the quick filter. And then all of these fields are going to be in alphabetical order. So you can scroll over to the right until we get to the uh, cuss group field. And sure enough, I can see that it's set to 80. Um, as I said before, you can also just search for all customers in this top bar um, because the customer group is just shown on this very front grid and I can see sure enough my record got updated to a customer group of 80. All right couple quick other things there's a couple other ways that we can update data using x++ code. First um, we can use a do update statement. Um, do update statements are definitely not recommended. Um, they, the reason why is the do update will bypass any code in an overridden update method. Um, and very often, whatever code you have in the update method is code that you want it to run. Maybe there's some validation or maybe it updates related records. So you really only want to run, run a do update statement in very special circumstances where um, you're correcting maybe a single field one time. This in general is not a best practice to run a do update. But the way you call it is the same way you would with a regular update. You're going to select your data into your table buffer, check that if it exists, use a TTS begin commit, make sure you're using a for update in your select statement, and then set your values and then call do update instead of update. Again, if we go to the cuss table and I look at the methods, I can see on this table there is an overridden update method. I can go ahead and actually um, 
here I can right click on this method and say view code. The system's gonna open um, a code editor window and take me directly to this code. You can see in the case of Cust table and many other base Microsoft tables, there's actually a lot of code in the Cust table. And so if I don't um, call update, it's gonna skip all of this logic and that may um, have effects that I you know don't want so definitely make sure in general you're always calling the update statement um, but do update is an option uh, perhaps you want to purposely bypass that logic and do update would be another way to do it the last way of updating data through um, code is with the update record set or update underscore record set statement. You can write an X plus plus statement that will update multiple records really, really quickly um, using a single trip to the SQL database. It's a really fantastic way of updating data rather than writing maybe a while select that updates um, records. If you don't have some conditions inside that while select, um, using an update record set uh, is really great. I'll write another video, an article kind of covering that topic more in detail. Um, but for now, you know the core ways to um, update data in Microsoft Dynamics 365 for Finance and Operations. Hopefully you appreciate how easy this is, how we can just really focus on um, the business logic. We don't have to manage the SQL connection string and so many other variables that you might need to in another language to be able to update the data. The key things to remember are to make sure that you're using this for update statement. Um, make sure you use a TTS begin and commit and make sure you call update in between. Okay, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you watching. If you liked the video, click the like button. I also invite you to push the subscribe button as well. If there's other topics you would like to see a video on, please post in the comments and I'll see what I can do. I hope you learned something new today. Thank you.